Hello, hello everyone. It's good to be here. It's good to be here in uh, in Berlin. It's been a while since I'm being here. Uh, honestly, I was not expecting like this level of quality of a meetup because when we do meetups, I organize React uh, meetup in in Poznan. Basically, our idea of snacks is pizza, not like all of this food like this. <laughs> but I'm talking about one pizza, uh, you know. So it gets. <laughs> It's great quite, quite rough, uh, but I'm not here to talk about pizza, I, although pizza makes you f sleep better. And the another thing that makes you sleep better is uh, it's Cypress I.O., and this is why I'm here to talk about it. And, okay, I have a wrong clicker, that's interesting. Okay, I'll just do it like this. Um, so my name is Tomasz Okome, I work as a senior front-end developer at Olex Group. I mostly do diffs uh, for a living. We are the biggest online company you've never heard of. Uh, we have, uh, we operate in for 45 countries and basically uh, we do classifieds, so such as like Olex and stuff like that. And basically the name came because we wanted to have a three letter domain and Olex was the only one that was actually free. So you know, AAA, AAB was taken. Sure, no, it's fine, that's fine, I can just do it. And so the question for, for you guys, like, uh, why are we afraid to push stuff to production on Friday? Well, mostly because we want to go home, and also like we don't want to break stuff. And the one we one way that we could you know make sure that we don't break stuff is actually go ahead and test it. But like manual testing takes a bit some time, uh, so to speak. And uh, please, I mean, do not raise your hand. But whoever has not broken production, may he throw the first stone. In any case. Does Cypress help with all of that? Does Cypress help with us being more confident with releasing stuff to prod whatever we, we, we want, for instance, in the middle of the night? And I think it does. But before we move on with Cypress, uh, I've been for a front-end developer for the last six years, working on six different companies during this, this time. So I've seen uh, quite a lot, and in the most of those places, we did automated testing. We did um, Selenium, we did Python, we did uh, distributed testing. Distributed testing is when you push stuff to prod without testing, because users are going to take care of that. Uh, but you know, when it comes to automated tests, like we had stability issues metric shit ton of stability issues. And also those tests were difficult to write, even harder to debug because sometimes you just have to do console log and that's it. And all of this led to complete lack of trust in, in tests. Like who cares? Because if they are not stable, w well we don't trust them. And the, the most important part of our software is to able to trust that it actually works. And well, we had to use Selenium. I'm not a huge fan of, of Selenium, mostly because it's very slow. It takes uh, like two weeks to start. And my idea of having automated tests uh, in, my, in my new project is that I wanted to have this transition from automated tests are failing, like who cares? They're failing anyway. Like most of the time they're not stable, who cares? <coughs> to, well automated tests are failing, it should be a goddamn alarm. Because if they are failing, it means that I know users cannot log in. And uh, here's a fun story. Uh, at my previous company we had also automated tests. Everything was passing, we did our release to prod, and then we find out that users are not able to log in, even though the, though the tests were passing. Because the tests were able to click the login button, users were not because there was an ad over the login button. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of different with Cypress I.O. There's no Selenium, so uh, this is a huge benefit. You can deal back like you are used to using uh, Chrome DevTools. Uh, you have complete control over your network, so you can test passing. If you do bugs, uh, I don't. Uh, you can test failing requests or stub requests, and easy to write. It's just JavaScript. So, of course, if you want, you can learn Python. Python is an incredible language, but you don't have to. Uh, also, you get automatic screenshots and video recordings. So, uh, if you, I don't know, run out of Netflix, you can watch those videos um, instead. And also, if you tweet at them, like I did, you're going to get a free T-shirt and some stickers. So, I do highly recommend it. And uh, they are an awesome company. And we use it quite heavily at work, uh, so we use it for every single pull request. So basically, if you want to merge anything to, to our master, all of those tests that are running on eight different countries, they, they have to pass for you to be able to merge stuff. We also have a set of tests that are running against the production environment. Uh, okay, this video cannot be loaded, which is lovely, so I'm just going to see you, I'll tell you a bit about it in action. And yeah, um, so I'm going to do some. Uh, so I'm going to do some some live coding, 
Also, I will be talking about live coding tomorrow, a component in Smoosh event, why you should never do live coding because it's a goddamn terrible idea. Uh, but nevertheless, I will stop moving now. Uh, we are going to write some tests for this to-do app. So you know you have like to-do, learn Cypress, uh, another one, uh, give a talk, and I can remove that, you know, uh, just a to-do app. So over here, on the left side, I have Visual Studio Code. On the right-hand side, I have uh, Cypress UI. And Cypress runs just inside of a browser. So you can see that it's no nothing well new, no nothing additional that you need to to do is just open up Cypress, and uh, okay, I'm not going to go for NPM installer right now because it doesn't make sense. But uh, one of the coolest features of Cypress is that if you move, uh, if you change a test in any way, for instance, I'm right now expecting true to equal false, and I'm going to save it, the test is going to run automatically, and well, expected true to equal false, the test is going to fail, no big deal. But I didn't need to like restart Selenium or anything like that. Like it's l quite literally. Uh, a second, and we are ready to go. Awesome. Uh, let's let's do something. We would like to visit uh, this website. So Cypress exposes a global CI object that you can use. Not crypto. I don't want, I don't want to mine Bitcoin. Who cares? CI object, and you can use it to visit uh, visit a address. So basically, you can visit, for instance, your local host instance. And now, after I save this test, it's going to refresh, and you can see that I'm visiting the uh, my uh, my, my test, and also the cool part about this, let me refresh that, is that I visited this page, and I can open up my DevTools and just go ahead and click on stuff in my app, and it's fully interactive. I can debug it the way I'm used to, so with, you know, I have console, I have uh, everything that you are used to when working with web development, and also you'll notice that if you click on a request, it's, it's fairly small, so let me just make it bigger, if you click on the request, you have here a snapshot of your DOM. So this is the state before the request, and this is the state after. So you can switch between and after of your request and to see uh, how the state of your app is, is changing. So even without the videos, it's very easy to, to debug. Well, another thing is that if you click on a request and open up your console, what you can see is uh, the request that was sent and also the response that was given. No console logs, everything is, I mean, okay, this is a console log, but you don't need to write your own console logs in order to have that. You just get it out of the box. Okay, let me move on to write some more testing. So uh, first thing you could notice is that I have a, a URL here, and I'm not going to copy and paste it all over, all over uh, my test because it doesn't make sense. For instance, I wanted to have different tests on uh, staging or on production or whatever. Uh, this is where Cypress JSON comes in. This is your configuration file, and here you can specify the base URL of your app. So for local testing, this is going to be my local host, but of course you can do uh, production or whatever. So if I have it specified, I can just visit slash bank, and it's going to uh, work, and I have uh, visited my test. Okay, let me write a test. So I actually forgot the name of, uh, of the class that I've used for this uh, to-do list, so I can open up DevTools and actually go ahead and debug it like I'm used to. So it is a uh, to-do list li, awesome. So what we do is we get the elements. So it's ci get to-do list li should have length of one. And this is like jQuery. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy as that. It's as easy as jQuery was. So I have a test that expected li to have a length of one, which is correct. I do have a single element. But it's a terrible test because, whoops, I'm going to add another to the item. I know it's very small, but I have two items here. If I refresh this, te this test, well, it's going to fail, obviously, because I have two items. I was expecting one item. So I can do this and go home. Not really. Uh, because it's also a terrible test, because now if someone has a third item, you know the deal, I'm not going to do it all the time. So I mentioned that with Cypress you have complete control over your network, so you can do fixtures. So basically the way it, it works is that you can run a server, so you have your very own fake server, and inside of it you can do route, and basically if you send a GET request to the API to do this, you can specify the response. I would like to ha respond with an array, uh, it's going to have ID of one, name, uh, do 
the demo and is complete uh, false because I'm not finished. And I'm going to expect it to have a length of one. And you can see over here that it actually has responded with, uh, with this item. But another issue is that, okay, I would like to have more of those. I can do this and change it to four. But then I'll have to copy and paste like this bit all, all over the time, all, all the time. And it doesn't make sense. Another thing that you can actually do with Cypress is that you can have fixtures. So Cypress creates a folder for you called Cypress, and inside of it there's a folder called fixtures. And here you can specify, for instance, I have those uh, to-dos. And here's just an array of uh, some to-do items. So what we can do is we can remove all of those crap, bang, and just do fixture to-dos. And this is kind of like a special syntax that lets Cypress know um, yeah, the, the Cypress know that, okay, I would like to you to go to inside of the fixture directories, get me the to-dos, and return them whenever there's a request to this API to-dos. Okay, let me fail this test. You will notice that it's not failing, at, I mean, uh, at the very instant that I run the test. It's actually waiting uh, some time. It's actually waiting four seconds, because I'm not sure if you noticed, but some of the web apps are kind of slow. And basically, Cypress is giving you a benefit of doubt is that your app is going to eventually load all of those to-dos. And let me show you an example of it in action. So I'm going to make my app uh, slower. Don't do that. Uh, so it's going to actually get those to-dos after five seconds. And now we have an issue. Because if I restart this test, it's waiting for four seconds to get those to-do items, but only after five seconds, the request was actually sent, and right now I do have those to-do items, but well, it's too late. Too late to apologize. So what we can do instead is to wait for this request. So you can specify aliases for your request, such as I want this request to be henceforth known as, as YOLO, and what, what we can do is that after we visit, wait for YOLO. And now if I save this test, and refresh, you can see actually here in the log that it's waiting for YOLO to, to complete, and as soon as it's been completed, I have, uh, I have my response. Okay, let me just remove this timeout because it's going to make the demo a bit slower. And uh, one last thing I would like to show you is that um, even though uh, I don't do bugs, but some of you might, um, <laughs> imagine that, uh, I don't know, your backend is failing, and you would like to test that. Uh, of course, uh, because I'm, I'm not going to show that because I don't have the time. You don't have to use fixtures. You can also run those tests against your actual database, but make sure that the state of your database is kind of predictable. So at the very start of your test, you always have exactly the same state. So in order to test errors, you have to use a bit of a different syntax. So you can specify method is going to be get API to do's, and I'm going to say that, oh, Okay, I would like to return it with a status 500 and an empty response. And we actually have it uh, right here. So we have, oh no, we have an error. So we can quickly write a test for it. So we would like to have get error to have a length of one. And now we have a passing test. So basically all of this shows you is that you can create your tests uh, very quickly. I can, I can take it. Very quickly, very easily. Uh, this is only a start uh, of all of the list of the features, but what I do enjoy the most is this log, because honestly, if you have a very, very long test, like this is uh, incredibly useful, especially with, uh, with videos, with screenshots, and I do highly recommend if you are interested in getting your uh, stuff automated, and I do highly recommend it. Uh, if you are going to read a single article, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, but I do highly, highly recommend best practices on Cypress uh, documentation. Uh, of course, you're not going to read the whole docs, but this one, this one you should actually read because it's an excellent written article about how to do automated tests and how to do them well. <laughs>